Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick9G. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be looking at the Twilight Zone. More specifically, I'm going to show you what is my pick for the five creepiest moments of all the Twilight Zone series. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's dive deep and talk about why these are such great moments. Now, what makes something creepy versus something scary? Now, in terms of scary or frightening, we have that emotion to kind of pull back. Our heart starts racing and we definitely become very alert. That's opposed to what we're talking about here. I want to make that big distinction. Creepy meaning unsettling, meaning something in the pit of your stomach. Or if you put yourself in the story or the situation, you're like, I do not want to be here. I'm going to get out of here. So I would keep in mind the feeling of unsettled, being unsettled. I think that's the most important point here. Our number five moment comes from the episode, The Hitchhiker. Initially, you may not think that this moment or this episode is that creepy, but it's really interesting to watch. You see Inger Stevens, who unfortunately had a short life herself. It kind of parallels the story, but going into the episode, she plays an amazing character here. We see her very similar to the movie Psycho, in which Janet Lee plays a character who's running, escaping in the car. Very similar type idea, but here she's going across country and she sees this man that keeps appearing, holding out his thumb and asking her for a ride. Now she speeds up, she continues on a road, and she sees him far in the distance and passes him multiple times. Now that idea in itself is kind of creepy, but think about it. This man, he doesn't even look strange. He doesn't look scary there's no makeup on him there's nothing really unusual about the look the fact is what's happening that he constantly appears throughout the route there's no logical explanation for what is going on and then there's this shot that i think is one of my favorites where she's in the car and there's this old 1950s style car and he just comes from the back side of the car looks in makes a kind of a grin asks her for a ride and then again he kind of changes his face just so much is encompassed in his looks and he's really good in this episode as well i'm not going to spoil the ending you should watch the episode but this is absolutely creepy think about this happening to you the cinematography is just top notch and the look of her looking in a rear view mirror and seeing that man back there is just perfection moving on to the fourth most creepiest twilight zone episode we're gonna be looking at The Living Doll. Now, if you're a big fan of Chucky, Child's Play, those type movies, or even any type of concept where a doll or any small figure like that is scary or creepy, I mean, this must all come to this episode. We have the amazing Telly Savalas, who does an amazing job. There are no jump scares in this. Um, there's a little bit of movement by the doll, but it's mostly the voice. It's mostly the things that she says. The simplicity of plot of this episode cannot be understated. This is just something where you have a simple premise. There's a doll that comes alive and it is sentient. And this doll can do kind of creepy things. It's an inanimate object that when, I guess when we sleep, that's where we're most fearful. But they did a fantastic job. And of course, Telly steals the entire episode. Moving along in our countdown, I can tell you that I really struggled between the third and the second episode. And that's because they both have to do with calls. Releasing though number three, this episode is called The Night Call. Now most of the episode we see this older woman. She's played by Gladys Cooper. She's amazing, she's brilliant. Why? Because everything that is creepy in this episode doesn't come from her, but from her reactions to what is happening. Think about that. We're seeing reactions to a woman who's being bothered, who is unsettled herself, and that's unsettling us. She's basically having repeated calls on the phone at different hours of the night. However, no one is saying anything on the other line. Of course, giving her an unsettled feeling. She has a caretaker as well, and no one kind of pays attention to what she is talking about. The ending, in my opinion, is not super strong. It's all right, it's mediocre, it's acceptable. It's just the buildup of the entire episode and the unsettled feeling of hearing her struggle to want to know who's on the other side of the line. As I stated before, the number two episode also has to do with a call. It's called Long Distance Call. 
Now in this one, we see two very fantastic actors. Bill Mummy, who is a young kid in many of the things that he stars in. Fantastic little child actor, as well as Lily Darvis. Now Lily Darvis plays a grandma who loves her grandson to death. And that is an understatement. We see her progression to when she does pass from this life. However, her connection with Bill Mummy, or Billy in this case, does not cut off when she passes. In fact, she continues to contact them with a phone that she gifted him and makes the kid, well, influences him to do some pretty scary things, very creepy things. Think about a child talking to his deceased grandmother and his grandmother telling him to do certain things so that he himself can pass from this life to another. It is very creepy and executed very well. I will add that something else that gives this episode a very creepy vibe is that it's one of the last of six videotape episodes of The Twilight Zone in which a different format was used which rendered physical scope and scale differently for what we're used to seeing. And what that does, it gives and allows for a small cast to be used. It's a very simple look, but it's also got a very like you are there type feeling. The interior set design was very unique as well. It's more small scale episodes and it almost looks like something that is run straight through, that there's not a lot of cuts, there's no movie element. It's a very real gritty look and that makes it even more scary again a lot of great acting from bill mummy and the things that we don't see are very creepy and just the idea and seeing the speech of the grandmother before she passes and then thinking of what she's trying to do again super creepy before i get to my number one moment guys and gals i do want to give an honorable mention i feel like i can't do justice to this list without mentioning this episode now this is an hour-long episode it is called the new exhibit it's actually one of my favorites of the hour-long episodes this has to do with museum mannequins this man that's kind of obsessed with this little museum that he works at and his mannequins it's actually a wax museum that focuses on all these serial killers now, what they did was to make mannequins of all of these actors dressed up and they make up them exactly as their mannequins. So what happens is in some quick shots you will see close-ups of actors with really thick makeup and they're supposed to be mannequins but they look so lifelike that it creeps you out. And then when they pull out they use the actual mannequin so that there's no movement. The camera tricks are really great in between the zooming in and out and there's some points where you can't tell whether that's a real person or not. They do it so so well and that's what's creepy about it that there's almost movement and sometimes these mannequins do move and then that's the person and then they switch to the mannequin like i said it's one of those things that you need to watch there's a slow build there's also a great allusion with an a to edgar Allan poe and the telltale heart and of course i won't ruin the ending no spoilers here but it is something that you really should watch it is a great piece of art and it makes you question what in the world's going on in this episode because it is puzzling and in my opinion extremely creepy now we get to the number one choice now this is super ironic but what i believe is the creepiest episode of the entire twilight zone series is one that i don't like to watch often you may think how does that make sense well it's simple because it creeps me out so much and that is 22. This woman, she keeps having this recurring nightmare of this room. It says morgue on it, and it says 22. And she's terrified. She really doesn't even go in there and see what's in there. But she has this recurring dream, and it happens over and over. There's a slow build of her walking through hallways, getting closer and closer to this room. It builds up, and then she wakes up. And then normal things happen, and then it builds up again. It happens multiple times. And then we get to the ending, which, again, I won't spoil. But it is something that is so creepy because everything is in your mind you think something's going to jump out you think something's going to happen maybe it does maybe it doesn't i won't spoil it but i can tell you that it is terrifying and then looking at the ending the concept of what the episode is trying to portray is just pretty mind-blowing the woman does an amazing job her name is Barbara Nichols, and she sells the part of this character who's super afraid, Liz Powell, of this situation. You really need to watch it and see if you don't get creeped out. I hope you enjoyed the look, guys and gals, at my five 
creepiest Twilight Zone episodes, plus one of course. Let me know your list down below. Do you agree with some of these? Did I forget any? Do I have them in a different order than you've chosen? i really love to see that because you never know, there might be something on the list which we may be all surprised to see. We'll see you next time. If you want to see more videos like this, please let me know and don't forget, be hopeful!